button. And so I, I think the recording will start right now. So we've been working on the vector analysis. Mm, I don't like this. So I don't like this color. So we will continue our discussions. What's wrong with this? Done. Oh, why is it? Is I mean? Let me stop for a while. Something is not quite right, but okay, let's continue. <laughs> Analysis. So we have been actually studied this curve. Let's say this is R, R plus delta R. Let me just stop. Okay, so this is supposed to be the delta R. And let's say this is point P and this is point Q. And this is called DS. So if you magnify this portion, if you use a magnifier, then this part will look like this. So this is actually the distance, ds. And this part is called arc. In Korean, it's called ko. And the straight line is called short. Or in Korean, this is short, huh? Actually, the, the really neck laser that looks like this is also called short. So as this is approaching to zero, then this delta r becomes tangent. Supposed to be Y. Y. Then 
the inner product between F and DR, which is given by X FX, Y FY. The shade is circular appearing whenever I write something, it's actually. Been bothering me, but I think there is no way that I can get away from that. So x dx, y dy, no, no parenthesis, dy plus z dz. fx dx fy dy fc dz and sometimes you need to do this integration of f dot dl over a certain point we have assuming we have two initial point a B and following some path C1, C2, then this integral A to B is called as walk. New page. Something two. I'm wondering if there is a function that we I can copy this. Maybe this. No. Um, is there any way that I can? Maybe this. Copy. Mm, no. I guess maybe that's the price that I have to pay. I was working on this. So this is page three. So recordability versus copyability. So where were we? So this curve A A to B F T L is actually A to B F X T X. F Y D Y F Z D Z. So I can ask the following question whether this integral is path dependent or path independent. Question is Path dependent. So let's try to find out the answer. So I'm going to specify the following point, starting with the uh, Cartesian coordinate A as origin, final point B, 1, 1, 1, and I'm going to follow two paths, or this, C1, C2, 
C3. So C1 is a curl in the XY plane. So C1 is defined x equal y square, z equal 0. C2 is, this point is 1, 1, 0. So C2 is a line from the x plane, 1, 1, 0, the x, y plane, to the point B, 1, 1, 1. So C2 can be parameterized as uh, x equal to 1, y equal to 1. C3 is a straight line starting from the origin A to B, 1, 1, 1. So C3 can be defined as x equal to z, y equal to z. Unfortunately, I cannot copy this, right? So uh, let me figure it out if there is a way that So what would be this? A tells something. And that's all the space I have. So I have to repeat it. So I drew small so this is a this is p so this is c3 this is c1 this is c2 so let's think about two different functions f F1, maybe I need to find the, save the space, A1. This is a vector function or a vector field. Say yz, x plus xz, y, xyz. And say F2. It's almost identical to F1, except the third component, y, z, x, x, z, y, say minus x, y, z. So case one. So let's calculate the path in the graph of F1. So on C1, F1 dr is yz dx plus xz dz uh, dy. Plus xy dz. But on C1, we have z equals 0, right? It's x, y plane. So z has to be 0. Right? C1 is on the x, y plane, x, y plane. So as a result, z must be 0. And so is dz is equal to 0. That's a C1, C2, C3. So it happens to be Z is equal to 0, and Z is equal to 0, D is equal to 0, so everything is 0, right? So if we integrate this, A0, 0, 0, zero one, one, zero, C one, F one, TR is equal to zero, right? On C two, 
x equal to 1, y equal to 1. That means dx equal to 0, dy also equal to 0. So f1 dr will be simply yz dx plus xz dy plus xy dz but dx is equal to 0, dy is equal to 0, where did this, this, this term survive? And x equal to y and y equal to y. So this is nothing but dz. So this integral 1, 1, 0 to 1, 1, 1, following path C2, F1 dr is equal to 0 to 1 dz equals 1, right? On the other hand, on C3, x equal to z, y equal to z, right? So, f1, dr is equal to yz dx xc dy xy dz is equal to z square dz z square dz z square dz right that means dx dy is equal to dz, 3z squared dz. Hmm. So you have to remember that. So, a to b on c3, f1, dr is 0 to 1, 3 z square dz is equal to 1. So we have a very interesting result. For this function, a, hmm, I cannot copy, so I have to repeat. I draw this curve all the time, repeat, many times. This is 1, 1, 0, x, y, c. So this is our path, c1, c2, or c3 directly. So we have the following result, a to b, Following C1 plus C2, F1 dr is same as A to B. Following C3, F1 dr, right? Maybe I can use... Oh, I, I think I find the way setting can lead up that editing. Browse a password and editing. Let me just stop. The recording. Oh, sorry. It doesn't work. Recording. Interactions. No. General. I think there is. Okay. 
Welcome, students. Pairing mode. What does that mean by pairing mode? This is it. What gum pencil? So pairing mode. What do you mean by pairing? Okay, I'll figure it out later. So I guess we, today we have done with something. It's so cool. How about we can try this different? For how about? So have, remember that F2 is Y, Z, X, X, Z, Y, minus X, Y, Z. So I'm keep recording, right? So F2 dr is yz dx xz dy minus xy dz. And let's see if the, the result is the same as before. So C1. Y is X. X is Y square. Z is equal to zero. And DZ is equal to zero. So F2, so on C1, F2, TR is equal to zero, right? On C1 on C1. So as a result, integral of F1 dr is equal to 0. C2, x equal to 1, y equal to 1. So F2 dr, F2 dr is simply minus dz. And if you integrate C2, F2, dr is 0 to 1, minus dz is minus 1. On the other hand, we need a new page. C1 plus C2 is minus 1, right? On C3, x equal to z, y equal to z, right? So F2, t, uh, I have to memorize. Y, z, dx, x, z, dy, minus x, y, dz, right? So it looks like uh, z square dz, z squared dz minus z squared dz and this to cancel each other so a to b following 3 f2 dr is 
0 to 1, z squared is z, is 1 over 3. And if you go back to previous result, on the other hand, a to b, c1 plus c2, f2, dr is minus 1, which is different from a to b, c3, f2, dr. So in this case, the result is depending on the path. The previous case was one vector, so it doesn't matter whether you have taken, as long as two points are the same, A and B are the same, it doesn't really matter to which path you take. But in this case, it, it, it turns out that the result is path dependent. So why? The question is why? So F1 simply yzx xcy xyz F2 y z x x z y minus x y z let's see what happens if I disable the pressure it doesn't matter it doesn't work so maybe just go back to the, the original setting. No. So what, what do you need to draw? Welcome stylus. So this is not welcome stylus. Apple pencil. So the only difference is the last term, but if there is any general result for that, so just for the fun of it, let's try to calculate the color of these vectors, see and what happens. very easy to remember. Partial Z, partial F, Y. Oh. Plus Y, partial Z, partial F, X, minus partial X, partial F, Z, 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 X, Y. Partial X, partial F, Y, minus partial Y, partial F, X. So it's x, y, z is always counterclockwise. You just put plus and minus. Then it's very, very easy to remember the formula for car. So let's see. Temp. So for F1, this is x, <coughs> y, z. Y, X, Z, Z, X, Y. So call F1, X component, partial Y, partial X, Y, 
that's Fg, minus partial Z partial Xz. Y component, partial Z partial Fx, that is Yz, minus partial X partial Fz, which is Xy, plus Z, X partial X partial Xz, minus partial Y partial Yz. So X, If you take the partial derivative of x, y, what do you get? x, right? So this x minus partial derivative of x, z by z is x. Partial derivative of y, z by z is y minus Partial derivative of xy by x is y plus z, same way z minus z. And very nicely, they are cancels each other. And we have 0, right? On the other hand, for f2, X, Y, Z, Y, X, Z, minus Z, X, Y. Let's calculate call F2 is X partial X partial minus X, Y. Oh, no, Y. Minus partial z partial xz plus y partial x partial y and on y z z x y z x y z minus partial x partial minus x, y, plus z, partial x, partial x, z, minus partial y, partial y, z. So it turns out to be x, minus x, minus x, plus y, y, plus y plus z z minus z which is not zero right so first term has a minus 2xx second term is 2y y and third term is zero so so the core f is in general non-zero So maybe next page. This, this. So we have the following general result. If <coughs> core f is equal to 0, then a to b is pass independent. This is very important to reserve. And maybe you can take a break for five minutes. Okay, I'm going to continue. My TA actually found out how to remove the, the divider in smoothering surface. So 
So it is now working very nice. So there are many cases if the starting point and ending point are the same, such as starting with A and A. So this kind of integral is called closed integral. So Before we do that, I'd like to remind you one of the most important theorem in calculus is mean value theorem. of x and y and some function y equal to f of x. Assuming that you are integrating these integrals from a to b, then the mean value theorem says in integral of f of x from a to b is same as b minus a times f x bar x bar is somewhere between two points. For example, this can be x bar. So this mean value theorem is replacing the integral by the right hand with the height. So for example, I have to go my template. So I get, you know the mean value theorem, right? You learned in high school days, so maybe you don't miss much. You missed. So I didn't record after the break. Maybe. So let me see how much okay, that happens because I'm, it's my first time using this app. Assuming that this is point P, one, two, three, Let's try to do this integral. This is closed integral, which is one dl is actually dr x dx plus y dy z dz. So we have 2 f tl, 3 f tl, plus 4 f tl. So on the past one, tl is actually in x direction, say delta x dx, dx, x, and assuming that this whole length is delta x, this whole length is delta y, 
and pass two dl is in y direction y and three dl is minus x direction dl is minus y direction so assuming that this pos position is x y plus delta y over 2 z and this midpoint is x y minus delta y over 2 z so you have to remember the whole picture because I didn't talk so in path 1 okay let me just draw it each time. This is one. The so midpoint is x, y minus delta y over 2, c. So this integral f dl is actually only a to B, A to B, F, X, right? X, Y, Z, D, X. But we just allowed to use the mean value theorem, right? So this integral can be approximated by this value F, X, X, Y minus delta Y over 2, Z, delta X. The, the, this width is called delta x. This is delta y. On the other hand, integral 3, on 3, dl is minus x dx. And this point, x, y plus delta y over 2z. So this is simply minus a to b c to d a b c d f x x y z dx so again minus f x <coughs> x y plus delta y over 2 z delta x so if we add this integral together, what happens? 1 plus 3, the result is this. Minus fx, xy plus delta y over 2, z plus fx, xy minus delta y over 2, z delta x. And then you can make multiply by 1. So this is the same as actually minus of delta y f x x y plus delta y over 2z minus f x x y minus delta y over 2z delta x delta y and if that so this can be approximated by partial y partial fx right so that has to be minus partial y partial fx delta x delta y or approximately dx, dy, sometimes we call ds. A, B, C, D, 
we have we need to do two and four. Same method, likewise. Two plus four is actually you can obtain partial x partial f y dx dy. I like to leave it as homework so you can fill the gap at home. It's very easy actually. So it looks like this is Z. In this case, we can write down this way. And this is actually what? X component, Z component of curl, right? This curl F Z. And so we can write down this way, curl F Z T S. So because the, in this case, the orientation is in Z direction. So we have Z direction. So if we have general direction, this is normal vector. So in general, And Stoke theorem <coughs> Stoke theorem allows us to use electricity. If we didn't know Stokio, then we didn't have a light, electric light, no iPhone, no computer. Like the 19th century, you have a class using handles and blackboard, so no, no modern IT. So Stock theorem is very important because considering the curl E is minus round T round P from Maxwell's equation. So if we have some closed metallic loop, if we 
if I integrate the electric field along this cross below, because of the Stoke theorem, it becomes car of E E dot N D S. So this is your normal direction. It turns out to be minus partial T partial B N D S minus partial T partial B N D S. So the integration of the surface integral of magnetic field on the surface is put down into flux. Enclosed by a closed curve. So if the potential relative flux is time bearing, is a function of time, then as a first of derivative, it's induced the vertex across the, the loop. So Michael Faraday in 1870 something tried prove that the Stokes theorem experimentally by moving magnet in a closed loop in your portometer. And Michael Faraday found out that if, if you move this the magnet inside of this closed electrical surface, closed actually wire, right? Closed wire by moving the magnet, he found that the voltage is generated. That means electricity is generated. So, method. And everything is the result of this Stokes theorem. Very simple. Closed line integral of a vector, the same as the surface integral of a curve of that vector, is a uh, Of modern technology, actually. So, this Stokes theorem so without Stokes theorem, no electricity. iPad. <laughs> so any questions about this stock theorem? It's, it's one of my favorite mathematical theorem because it allows the modern technology. Next topic is a little bit more complicated, but I will let you have a time to copy because I think I'm going a little bit too fast. So, and that's the reason why we are still learning mathematics in engineering school, because I don't know, someday something you might be able to apply for the new technology, right? It may happen or may not, but 
Okay, let's go to the next page. Another relation is in involved with a volume integral. Oops. Let's say center is P and one, two, three, four, five, and upper part is six. So do my direction. Six normal direction is in this way. So n is normal vector to the surface. And we are interested in the following integral, closed surface integral on the closed surface. So let's try to calculate the first one. One plus six. So in this case, One is in minus TZ, FC, minus TX, TY, one plus six, FC, XYZ, TX, TY, and this point x, y, z plus delta z over 2, and this point, x, y, z minus delta z over 2, and, oh, moving, let me see if it is moving, no, maybe it's safer to use a new page. Remember, right? So, uh, one plus six, three, uh, one, two plus four, three plus five. So, so one, so one is but six is up, one is bottom. So six is simply this T S T T X T Y is simply using mean value theorem X Y C plus delta Z over two T X delta X delta Y and one We have my, the normal vectors in the pointing the minus direction of z. We have a dx dy is simply fc minus of xy 
z minus delta z over 2, delta x delta y. That's 1. So 1 plus 6 gives the following. f z x y z plus delta z over 2 minus f z x y z minus delta z over 2 delta x delta y. And I told you when you encounter the situation is complicated and you do nothing, right? Do nothing means you can either add 0 or multiply by 1. So let's, in this case, let's divide by the whole thing by delta z and multiply by delta z. And if we divide something, the difference by delta z is a partial derivative. So there's a partial derivative of fz evaluated at x, y, z, delta x, delta y, delta z. And that can be interpret it as this integral something, some integral x, y, z, tv, right? It's a volume integral. And so you can do the same thing. Similarly, let's go back. 2, 3, 4, 5 gives the following. If you have integrate f this is of course homo. You have the very interesting thing, volume integral, partial x, partial fx, Partial y, partial f y, partial z, partial f z, t v, which is no. Which is divergence of f t v. This is called the Gauss theorem. Or divergence theorem. So we learned the two important mathematical theorems. The first one is Tocque theorem. And second one is the divergent Gauss theorem. Maybe we can take a break for five minutes.
캐릭터 있잖아. 네. 여기서 이게 수직인 그 면의 수직인데. 근데 이 부호는 자기 마음대로 인 거예요? 아니 여기서 이거 밑으로 향할 거잖아요. 여기 밖으로 향하는 거거든요. 노말 이렇게 항상 쏙 보면. 아 박, 소면에 밖으로요? 네. 아. 그 이게 음. FX 이게 이렇게 바뀌잖아요. 음. 아까 좀 전에 민밸류 티어로만 했잖아요. 네. 선적분은 그 중간 값에다가 거리 곱해준 걸로 바꿀 수 있다 그랬죠. 이 적분은 이거 중간 값에다가 거리 곱해준. 근데 이 마이너스랑 플러스. 왜냐하면 이 방향에 이쪽은 플러스고 이쪽 은 마이너스죠. 네. 일본이면 얘가 플러스. 플러스고 이쪽은 이 반대 쪽이니까 마이너스. 그럼 얘가 플러스인 거예요? 아니 밑에 있잖아 밑에. 이 중심으로 해서 이건 밑에 있잖아. 아, 나 아, 그럼. 응. Recording. So, so far we have been considering the vector differential and integral calculus for Cartesian coordinate. So we have considered the vector inner product, vector product, gradient, curve, divergence, and Stoke theorem. And divergent theorem. So these are the topics.
that's available to the corporate for the next quiz, first quiz, including the other who's going to coordinate. So far, there is 19 the coordinate system known to us. And in this semester, we are going to learn three of them. We have learned already Cartesian coordinate. So the second coordinate system is cylindrical coordinate system. Cylinder is a cylinder, right? One point. In this coordinate, the, sp the point in space time is defined by three different coordinates. One is distance from the z-axis for rho, and azimuthal angle phi and z. This is x, y. The rho is distance from z-axis. Phi is Azimuthal angle in the projected XY plane and Z. I have to keep repeating the diagrams all the time. So this is your cylinder. So phi is defined by arctangent y over x. Assuming that we have two point P, Q 